So I know you traditionally hear from me when it comes to business coaching and what I have found fundamentally and also passionately is that it's less about the tactics and tools and uh, definitely the blueprints and it's more about what happens here and here before we get to that place. And it is part of my journey. It's the, the why and the testimony of my own life. And so I wanted to give you guys those fundamental tools first, because if I give you the other jargon and I say jargon, not fleetingly because I, business building is, is critical and there are steps and processes in that. Uh, but if I don't focus on the foundation, if I don't focus on the head and the heart and the home and all of the other areas of the joy zone, which is ultimately the unlock to everything. If you want what those specific affirmations are, you can go to the link below and, and tune in to what that is and learn about it firsthand. But today we're going to be talking about shame which feels really strange, but it ultimately is wrapped in every single person's story. And it's parallel generally to fear and fear of success, even fear of actually building or fear of sharing your story are the things that you have to be able to break free from before you decide that you're going to go on a mission driven, uh, impact driven business build right? I know your heart to serve. I know you have a heart to create the most amazing ministry, but we cannot do that from a place of brokenness. And you've probably heard that hurt people hurt people or wounded people wound people. But there's this heal people, heal people conversation that I really have been leaning into the fact that we're always becoming, which, you know, this is my phrase line all the time, but it's not about the becoming. It's about the alignment in the becoming of every single day. And so aligned people align people and my vision and hope for this specific show and really everything I do is to help get us to the foundation point of surrender, which is ultimately obliterating shame. And so I have this SOS strategy, the shame omission strategy. And if you think about the traditional SOS and perhaps you've even heard the incredible song by Lauren Daigle, and it talks about the SOS and the SOS is traditionally this signal sign for the ships or planes or anyone to recognize that you are in distress. And, and it is an international code. And so it's anywhere that you can know that there is distress, there are um, needs, right, at uh, the harbor. There are needs of health, there are needs. But this SOS is essentially a surrender. And that is the first step in this SOS strategy for literally obliterating shame. And so S is submission to shatter. We often put these things, these special uh, components of ourselves that are often secrets in a glass box and or a Pandora's box, if you will, and you step it into the closet and you don't want to go there and you're propelled towards the goodness. You're propelled towards the light. You're propelled to share and help others break free. But this over here is just a component. And, and we stand on top of it, sure, or we put it behind our back. Sure, and we know that it's something that pushes us and drives us into the ultimate mission of our lives um, and even our own testimonies. But if we don't shatter that glass box, if we don't bring it out of the closet, if we don't actually put it on a pedestal for others to see and bear witness to, we are not actually doing ourselves service. There is no freedom from the ultimate shame because it is still a secret. And we know biblically that whatever stays in the dark and does not have light apart from light will actually fail, will actually plummet, will actually um, create turmoil. And so everything is drawn into the light. And I want to encourage you when you're breaking that Pandora's box wide open for other people that before you put it on a silver platter for them to experience or take witness to, there is a lot of healing that has to happen. And this is a part of that. So first, break it open for yourself in secret understand what it is, unpack it, uproot it, do all of those critical pieces of uh, formulation and, and construction. Um, but first that deconstruction, that shattering has to happen. Uh, and you have to understand why you have to uproot and rewire. So the next part of that rewiring um, of this shame omission strategy is H and that is the harbor to help. 
And um, there's a great parallel to this because my father was in the United States Navy for 23 years and he would be on aircraft carriers and different ships and when they came back, they would be in harbor. And the harbor wasn't just for them to come home and, and bear witness and see their kids and, and their families that we missed him and we were so excited for him to be home. It was more so about the ship itself and all of the maintenance that needed to happen and all of the um, analysis that needed to take place and all of the repairs that needed to exist in order for it to be back and well equipped for it to go back onto its mission. And that harbor, that safe harbor is what you need for help. It's what you need to be repatched and reevaluated, and like I said before, rewired both mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, in order for you to go out and not abort the mission. It's not an abort of mission when they come back to the harbor. They are still on mission, but it's so critical for us to know that that help, that harbor, is what will actually propel us forward in safety and in that alignment zone that I was talking about so that you can go and help other people and do so from a place of healed alignment, right? Um, recovery. Next is A in shame, right? In case you haven't picked up on the fact that we're doing an acronym with the word shame uh, to obliterate it. And the next one is A, and this is armor to act. And Ephesians 6, 10 um, through 18 is what I want to draw you to. Uh, it's the knowing that every single day we have to armor up um, because once you shed and once you're in that place of brokenness and surrender, there is a, a raw frailty, there is a vulnerability that exists. And as you go to present it, and even after that harbor and you're experiencing it, there is still fresh, um, there's still a lot of freshness. And that freshness is an area that you could either have implanted with more negativity, with more potential weeds that will grow based on that fresh soil, or you're going to plant something deeper. You're going to nurture something strong. And in order to do that, you have to protect that soil. And that soil is the soil of your heart, that soil of your soul. And so you do that by armoring up every single day. And so Ephesians 10, I'm sorry, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God so that you can take stand against the devilish schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this darkness world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes to the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up your shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. The very next part says, pray also for me for the whenever I open my mouth, words may be given so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am the ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And I didn't intend to go forward, but uh, the word fearless kept coming into my, um, my visibility, my line of sight. And I think that that is what allows us to fearlessly go back out from the harbor is that we are armored, we are protected, and we are protected by all of those different pieces, the, the righteousness, the breastplate, the sword, the, all, the feet are of readiness, right? All of these things are equipping us. And so this is really critical because it's not just something that's equipping you, it's equipping that safe harbor. And for me, my harbor beyond just therapy, having that help in that realm was also my home. And so making sure my nucleus was so strong that when I went out, especially to go share my story, to build my business, to, to go on my mission, the mission and the calling on my life, I needed to know that this place was very secure. And security comes from armoring, from protecting, and from building up the strength that when you go out and, and hard things happen, you can retreat to this safety zone. And so understanding that it's not just personal, but it's also professional. In order to armor up professionally in your business, you've got to have that wisdom. You have to have that knowledge. You have to have the opportunities that are then become the fail forward moments and, and for you to be able to stand up again, brush off your knees, and go back into the war zone. So just realize that the armor to act is not impossible, but it is an action. 
and you actually actually have to put those things on. If you decide to go out into the mission field after the harbor, after the surrender, and you don't have those parts of your puzzle in play, if you're not protected and that just is on the side because it's there and it's on the sidelines, you are gonna go out and have be an open wound um, that can cause or create or even have embedded into you further infection. And I believe that's what's happening in the world in a really sad way right now is infection. And so I don't want you to be infected. I want you to stay in that place of, of openness that then creates healing from the heavenly realms above and from the people that are resources to you. I mentioned a therapist, could be a coach. Um, it could just be your church. It could be a community, uh, a small group, whatever that looks like. It could be a part of your spouse and children, but to know that it needs to be from somebody who has the wisdom in that field to help in the healing process. Um, obviously, he is the ultimate healer, and so he would be the best resource to you, um, but sometimes we need that additional support as well in the flesh. So there is an M and an E, and I don't know if I should continue so because I'm supposed to stay on track with the time. And so, yeah, I think you're going to have to come back next week for the remainder of the shame omission strategy, the SOS strategy, where you surrender it all and you come back into alignment with the truest mission of your life, the impact that you're incredibly intended to make and incredibly equipped to make. But in this process of the SOS strategy, we have M and E left. And so I hope you come back next week. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, do all of the things, review. Um, perhaps I wanna hear your story, right? I wanna hear your story of shame and how you've surrendered, how you've submitted to shatter, how you've harbored to help the cause, the issue, you, the, the, healed, um, the healing that had to happen and then armoring to act and how you armor up on a consistent basis and stay tuned for M&E and the remainder of this message next week. I'll talk to you soon, you guys. Thanks for being here. And if you don't hang out on Instagram, go follow me. Or if you do hang out on Instagram, go follow me. Uh, either way, that's where I'm at most. So DMs come directly to me and I'm excited to connect with you all the blessings and know that I've been there, know that I've been in that surrendered state. And so I empathize with you and I see you. And this is so critical for the foundation of what you likely came to me for. And that's the business build. Um, but start here, friends.